So, you want to destroy enemies with a powerful light. Or maybe just swing your hammer around yelling religious obscenities at them. Either way, Retribution Paladin is a ton of fun and it's great for doing just that. All right, so for this guide, we're going to start fairly basic on how to play Retribution Paladin. We will kind of go with the assumption that I've never played Paladin before, and then we'll build up from there. This will be multiple parts, so especially for this first part, we'll start at that more basic level and get more advanced as we go. For this guide, we will be mostly focusing on Mythic Plus, so that does mean that our build and playstyle will be for an AoE focus. There will be some differences for a raid build. However, the gameplay is not all that different. There will be some differences to some abilities, play style, and things like holy power usage. Start by showing you my build. It is a fairly typical, very popular build. Um, but I do encourage playing around with um, what works best for you. For example, in certain weeks with Incorporeal, I'm going to switch out Cavalier to turn evil to give myself that while still keeping blinding light. However, some people may prefer to change blinding light straight to repentance. Again, that's personal preference, um, whatever fits your playstyle best. I will put some of the important talents up on the screen that affect our abilities and how they play. Some of them will be very crucial to this playstyle and making that work as effective as possible. Some of the talents will also play into our tier set directly. I'm going to start by just going over each of the abilities, just quickly reading the descriptions of each. We're going to break them up into a couple categories, and then we will go over how they all fit together. So first of all, Retribution Paladin, as with any Paladin, works on a holy power system. So you can see here there are five sections of my bar here. Yours may be, look different. So at any time, you'll have anywhere from 0 to 5 Holy Power. You have abilities that will build Holy Power, and you have abilities that will spend Holy Power, your builders and your spenders. Your auto attack, also every other attack, will generate one Holy Power. You can see them building up. And then again, every other attack, so every 10 attacks with your auto attack, you will generate a full 5 Holy Power. Now let's go over the Builder abilities. Your first one will be Judgment. This judges the target dealing Holy Strike damage and causing them to take 20% increased damage from your next Holy Power ability. This generates two Holy Power. Second is Blade of Justice. This pierces enemies with a Blade of Light dealing Holy damage to your target and additionally Holy damage to nearby enemies. This has a max of two charges but also generates one holy power. Our third ability is Wake of Ashes, which slashes out at our enemies, dealing radiant damage to all enemies within 14 yards in front of you, reducing their movement speed by 50%, and burns them for radiant damage over nine seconds. This also has a stun effect on demons and undead enemies, and it generates three holy power. And then our fourth builder ability is Hammer of Wrath, Hurls a divine hammer that strikes an enemy for holy strike damage, only usable on enemies that have less than 20% health or during avenging wrath, and that generates one holy power. Now for our spender abilities, we have two primary options for our rotation. The first will be final verdict, which costs three holy power. This unleashes a powerful weapon strike that deals holy strike damage to an enemy target. Final Verdict has a 15% chance to reset the cooldown of Hammer of Wrath and make it usable on any target. And then our second is Divine Storm, which also costs 3 Holy Power. It unleashes a Whirl of Divine Energy, dealing Radiant Damage to all nearby enemies. That damage is reduced past 5 targets. The one other note on Divine Storm, it doesn't say in the description, but as part of our talents, our Divine Storm not only does damage around our character in the immediate surroundings, it will also, if I back up here, you'll notice it will fire out a blast of energy that does damage at a reduced rate. 
while we want to get the most effect of our dam uh, out of our Divine Storm by casting it right next to people, if we have a long line of enemies, like on a mo moving pole, or if we are, say, running from the the pull in and then run out on Throne of Tides. We can take advantage of that by getting pulled in and we can run out, use just flick our camera, use that range on there to still get some of that damage out on them. Now we do have a third spender ability, which is a more utility ability because it is actually a healing ability. And that is Word of Glory. This also costs three holy power, but this calls down the light to heal a friendly target. There are a couple of abilities that I want to point out for damage that are neither builders or spenders, but the first one is Final Reckoning. This calls down a blast of heavenly energy, dealing holy damage to all targets in the target area and causing them to take 30% increased damage from your holy power abilities for 12 seconds. And then second, our main damage cooldown on a one minute cooldown. Call upon the light to become an avatar of retribution, allowing Hammer of Wrath to be used on any target Increasing your damage, healing, and critical strike chance by 20% for 23 seconds. Now, I, I will do more in-depth look at utility abilities and ways that they can be used, ways that you can help out your group, ways that you may not realize they can be used. Um, but for now, we're just going to quickly go over them, and then we'll get more in-depth later. Uh, probably in the second part. So, just quickly, we've got Lay on Hands, which is a very big heal on a long cooldown. We do have Shield of Vengeance, which creates a barrier on yourself that absorbs damage for 10 seconds. When the shield expires, it does also burst to inflict holy damage, equal to the amount of damage absorbed divided among nearby enemies. Divine Protection reduces all damage you take by 30% for 8 seconds. Divine Shield grants immunity to all damage, harmful effects, knockbacks, and force movement effects for 8 seconds. Blessing of Protection blesses a party or raid member, granting immunity to physical damage and harmful effects for 10 seconds. Blessing of Sacrifice blesses a party or raid member, reducing their damage taken by 30%, but you suffer 100% of damage prevented. This lasts 12 seconds, or until transfer damage would cause you to fall below 20% health. And then Blessing of Freedom blesses a party or raid member, granting immunity to movement impairing effects for 8 seconds. We do also have Cleanse Toxins. This is a great cleanse for poison and disease effects on only an 8 second cooldown. And then Intercession. This is our battle res, allowing you to revive a friendly target in combat at 60% health and 20% mana. Now we can go over our rotational abilities a little bit more in depth to really figure out what they're doing, how they're changing the way we should be playing. So, Judgment. In addition to generating the two holy power, does increase the damage received from holy power abilities. That only lasts for the next one cast. However, Final Reckoning also increases damage from those abilities, but that is a debuff that lasts 12 seconds and is for all holy power abilities. So now let's see how this all fits into our rotation. Because Final Reckoning and Judgment increase the damage from our Holy Power abilities, we always want to make sure that those are on our targets when we use our spending abilities, if at all possible. Final Reckoning is on a 1 minute cooldown and only lasts for 12 seconds, so obviously that won't always be on our targets. In addition, we do have the dot effects from Blade of Justice, and Wake of Ashes. The more consistent we can get our dot effects on all targets, or as many as possible, the more damage is constantly going out. In addition, Blade of Justice does also drop Consecration under our target due to the talents that we chose. So it actually has two 
dot effects that are applied to nearby enemies. One of those is applied when it is cast. Consecration, on the other hand, is a constant just on the ground effect. So if an enemy was straggling behind and then shows up, we'll still get that effect as well. And just to show what that looks like, when I cast that, you see this glowing effect under the target. That is our consecration. So now to kind of get an idea of how we're going to open up our combat and how we're going to maintain that rotation. Ideally, we want to just start using our abilities almost on cooldown. The one consideration there is that we want to never be going over 5 holy power. Anything that goes over is just wasted holy power. So say we generate 150 holy power over one fight, we want to turn that into 50 spenders. Obviously those numbers are arbitrary, but the point is every 3 holy power that we generate we want being used on spenders. Or as close to that as possible. So because of that, generally, when I'm getting to 3 or 4 holy power, I'm already looking to press my spending ability, whether that's Final Verdict or Divine Storm. Because of the debuff on Judgment, which increases damage from your next holy power ability, we ideally want to cast that between every finisher ability. So if I'm at 3 holy power, we know that Judgment generates two Holy Power, so I'll want to cast one real quick and then immediately use my Spender. At worst case, we may waste one Holy Power if we generate one through our auto attack, but if it's just one, that's okay. However, if I were at four, that's already a guaranteed wasted Holy Power and possibly two. And also when we look at Wake of Ashes, which generates 3 Holy Power, there's a much larger likelihood that we'll end up wasting Holy Power. So in that case, I'll want to use Wake of Ashes at most at 2 Holy Power. Outside of that, we generally want to use our abilities as often as possible. Most of our abilities do some kind of debuff or dot effect, so we'll want to keep those going as much as possible. Hammer of Wrath does do a decent amount of damage, however it's not as big as some abilities, so it will be lower on the priority, but because of our cooldowns and constantly keeping things on cooldown, we'll be able to fit it in quite nicely. It'll just be a, another filler to generate that one holy power. Just like Judgment, however, only generates one. So in that instance, you may find if you're at four holy power, Rather than casting Judgment in that case, you may just want to use Hammer of Wrath, especially if you've already used Judgment and have that debuff on the target. Okay, so if we're just going to do a quick example of how I might start a poll. Because Final Reckoning does increase Holy Power ability damage for the next 12 seconds, I want to get that off before my first spender. However, it doesn't need to be first. Um, because it only lasts for 12 seconds, especially if it's a moving pull and you're having a little bit of difficulty catching up or something, then you don't want to always use it right away and waste three seconds just building your holy power. So, what I'll typically do, because Judgment does have a 30 yard range, Blade of Justice has a 20 yard range, we can start throwing those down on the targets as we approach them, and then we'll cast Final Reckoning before using that Spender ability. So if you imagine these are five living targets that our tank has aggroed into one area, what I can do is I can immediately drop my dot on them with Blade of Justice. I use my Judgment to get the debuff, and you can see I've got a Holy Power, so I'm going to drop Wake of Ashes. I also pop Wings, and now I use my Divine Storm, increasing the damage as much as possible. I use a reapplied I'm going to reapply Judgment and then immediately go again. And then I use my Wake of Ashes because I have the extra room to spend the Holy Power. And now I'm balancing all the abilities, which you can see are periodically on cooldown. I don't want to go over that 5 Holy Power. So I'm keeping that under, allowing my auto attack to also generate. And then every 4 to 5 Holy Power using my Divine Storm in this case because we are going for AoE damage. 
One other ability that is important to use, which is one of our capstone talents, is Divine Toll. This instantly casts judgment on up to five targets within 30 yards. After casting Divine Toll, you instantly cast judgment every five seconds. Divine Toll's judgment deals 100% increased damage. The important thing about this, again, it's a one minute cooldown, so it can line up with these guys quite well. It does last for 15 seconds of recasting. You don't want to use this at the end of a pull. The reason being, for one, if you use it and there's only five seconds of combat left, you're wasting 10 seconds of it. And the way this works is you, on use, you get one cast, five seconds, you get the second cast, 10 seconds, you get the third cast, uh, 15 seconds, you get the fourth cast. If there's five seconds or less of combat, you're really only missing out on the three extra casts. At most, if it's just over five seconds, you'll get that second cast, you're still losing half of the damage. Furthermore, if you use it on one target, it lasts you know, blah, blah, blah. a couple seconds later, they're dead. I'm going to switch over to this guy. I'm waiting for the tank to pull on him and uh, waiting. Oh, wait, I just pulled it. <laughs> so that's the reason we. I'm leaving this a little bit separate. I wanted to call that out. Very often see Retribution uh, Paladins mistakenly pull a group or a boss because they just just left click passively target an enemy but they forget that divine toll is still ticking that will cast on anybody you have targeted even if it's not the original target that said it does also generate a lot of holy power because you are casting all of those judgment all at once because we are casting five instances of judgment all at once when we use divine toll we instantly get five holy power so it is very powerful in that way. It does additionally apply that that debuff. So although we will be casting judgment as much as possible, you know that within 15 seconds of casting divine toll, priority on judgment will drop just a just slightly. It, it's still going to be a, a filler ability, but if you are waiting to use a spender because you want to recast judgment notice that they may already have that debuff on them from divine toll that's really about it as far as the basics of our rotation go again it's balancing our debuff from final reckoning our debuff from judgment and therefore also divine toll and then making sure we line that up with our buff our own buff from Avenging Wrath, which will start generating a lot of holy power very fast with that haste buff. The way that this will work with trinkets, obviously if it's just an equip effect trinket, you can try to line up your Avenging Wrath with those just random proc effects um, if you notice that they've triggered. But with an unused trinket, obviously we can control that much better when we use them. We'll want to use that on use with Avenging Wrath to really take advantage of that burst window. With our single target rotation, we're just going to change all those Divine Stormcasts to vi Final Verdict. So I'm going to drop that on him, drop my Judgment, get those buffs going. Boom. As you can see, now I'm just switching to Final Verdict, getting as much of the, as many casts of those as I can out of every three Holy Power. So I just briefly look at my. Uh, my gear here. Generally, I priority haste and then versatility are going to be our most effective stats, followed by critical strike and then mastery. Now, just to quickly go over, this will play into our talents and our abilities. We do have our set bonus. You can see our two piece set bonus means expurgation lasts an additional three seconds and deals 30% increased damage. Casting judgment or divine toll on a target with expurgation causes wrathful sanction damaging the target for holy damage and resonating holy damage up to four nearby enemies. Our four piece bonus will be Wrathful Sanction grants you Echoes of Wrath, causing your next Templar's Verdict or Divine Storm to deal damage a second time at 25% effectiveness. This effect also does not consume that Judgment debuff. So this allows a second spender cast to take advantage of that Judgment buff without reapplying it right away. This is especially useful in those Avenging Wrath windows where you've got holy power generating at a super fast rate 
you don't want to waste holy power but just to get in that judgment cast so if you are keeping it up fairly frequently that'll still help kind of mitigate any of that allows it just a little bit more relaxed um, priority on that judgment cast I'm gonna wrap up this first part here I hope that, that this has helped give you some good knowledge on how to just, again start playing the class really put you in a direction to start experimenting with ways to use your abilities some of them will be situational but as long as you understand the abilities you'll understand why um, definitely let me know if you have any questions or if you found something that works best for you that you think is important so as I said earlier I do want to do a second part that covers some more advanced techniques I do want to go over ways that you can really get the most out of your group with your utility abilities as well as ways that I've used keybinds, click casting, and different add-ons that have really helped improve my performance in Mythic Plus, as well as my UI elements. Anyway, thanks for watching. I definitely want to do that second part. I don't know when right away, but hopefully in the not too distant future. All right, thank you. Catch you next time.